Okay, so I guess we should get started. So I think uh, I, or in general, we have some agenda, but the first point on the agenda is uh, open forum uh, for any questions and issues which anyone wants to raise. Does anyone have anything? Doesn't sound like it. Okay, so I guess We can move to the open proposals, but I think the only open proposal is from Paolo about the metrics uh, for the Streams Bridge. And Paolo wasn't able to join today because of his son's uh, birthday party. So uh, I don't know if anyone has something to discuss about that without uh, Paolo or if we should move on. Okay, so I guess uh, maybe nobody hears me and that's why I'm talking alone. Uh, so the next point on the agenda is PRs which need to be discussed. Uh, we had a bunch of PRs uh, last time, but I don't think we have any PRs, which I thought uh, would need some discussion. Uh, but does anyone have any open PRs he wants to discuss? Okay, so I guess no PRs to discuss. This will be a quick meeting if we continue this way. So the next point which I added to the agenda was the deprecation of the Helm 2 chart. So we have now a Helm 3 chart. And to be honest, because I'm not really Helm user, I have no idea how much popular Helm 2 versus Helm 3 still is, but I guess if we would decide to remove the Helm 2 chart in the future and want to push the users to the Helm 3 chart, then it might make sense to kind of deprecate the Helm 2 chart and I don't know, keep it for one or two releases before removing it. Do we know when Helm 3 um, sort of came out? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not a Helm user either, so I've got absolutely no feeling for whether we're sort of where we are on the sort of adoption curve for Helm 3. I think it was last year, wasn't it? Helm Thank 3 you. was released in November 2019. That still sounds relatively recent. And actually, so, wait, let me, I found some blog post. Let me open it on the, actually, I'm not sure you can see the blog post. Or whether you can see the agenda. We see the blog post. 
So uh, they say that they support Helm 2 for bug fixes until August 13th. So I'm not sure if this is something we want to follow or not, to be honest. So the reason why I think uh, why we should try to get rid of it sooner or later is that uh, we have the Helm free chart now, but the build system is kind of a bit weird. We have the master files in the Helm chart for the deployment and for the, all the RBAC files. And we use the make build to generate out of that the installation files for the regular installation. So for example, one of the complications we have now is that we have two Helm charts and uh, the Helm chart free, the Helm free chart is now used as the master for generating the RBAC files and the deployment files uh, for the installation files for the regular ones, but it is not used to generate the Helm 2 charts because I think that would be too complicated with all the templates inside and so on. So it's kind of, for example, right now for maintaining these two things, all changes to, I don't know, deployments or RBEX need to be done on two separate places, plus use the make build to kind of push them to the other locations. So that's, for example, something what's not completely practical. And what I think over the time might cause issues with not updating everything and so on. I, I completely agree. I think that it's gonna be a bit of a nightmare going forward, um, or at least inconvenient. Um, we could do some very basic, maybe some Travis checks to check if one file changed, then the corresponding one in the other chart has changed, but that's gonna be subject to exception as well. So it's not gonna be a completely solid system. So getting rid of the Helm 2 chart would be ideal, but maybe it might be worth engaging the community and getting some numbers on how many people are using each chart. Is that possible? I've, I guess it depends what you mean with engaging community. Uh, I don't know. I think the, a, I think the easiest way how to engage the community is to ask on Slack. Yeah. But to be honest, in the past, I didn't got really any answers uh, to that, which would kind what of the, give you some numbers. What's the migration from Helm 2 to Helm 3? Like, is this, if someone has installed the Helm 2 chart, they need to start again? Or is there a a path from that to the new one. Like, can they do a Helm upgrade to the new chart? Or because I think the the thing that would make me wonder about deprecating or removing it is if it's a dead end. I think if we can provide a procedure for if you're on the Helm two chart, this is how you move up to Helm three. Then I think yeah, deprecating it is fine. To be honest, I have no clue about the upgrades between Helm versions. Yeah, so um, I just linked a, a blog. From what I understand, you do a migration of Helm 2 to Helm 3, and then you convert the release from a Helm 2 chart into a Helm 3 chart. So I think what we could do is make sure that you can actually follow that um, defined conversion um, migration path that, that Helm is defining. That'd be a good piece of work. So maybe we should raise an issue to ensure that we are um, doing that. Obviously, like as a system test, this might be quite heavy because you'd have to install Helm 2 with Tiller, et cetera, then migrate to Helm 3. Um, 
and obviously uh, migrate from the version two chart to the version three chart. Did you paste the link into the chat? I did, yeah, uh, assuming it's the right chat. <laughs> yeah, Zoom group chat. How do I find the chat when I'm sharing the screen? Uh, I think if you try, go to the bottom, the bar appears. I'm, I'm, I'm not a Zoom user, afraid. I can just send it to you on Slack, uh, Jakob. Hey, I found it. It's a bit crazy. <laughs> So, I mean, we can open the issue, but might be much more actionable if there is someone who would actually test that. Any volunteers? I mean, I think opening the issue itself is a useful signal to the community that this is what we intend, you know, that we, we want to have some sort of migration path. Um, and then obviously if no one steps up to do it, then, well, that's fine. Um, but it's kind of highlighting that we're trying to get people to move that way. Okay, so I can open the issue, that's easy. Uh, I can try to put some sentences about it on the Slack channel. Something in a sense that we are planning to deprecate it and remove it in the future versions and that if someone has a big issue about it, they should start complaining now and not later. Uh, should we wait for some movement on the issue or uh, for someone to test it before calling the Helm 2 chart deprecated or should we go on and call it deprecated right now? I, I think it's worth us waiting a week and seeing if the issue gets any comments at all. Okay, so let's say uh, that we should wait until the next community meeting. Before uh, deprecating it or setting some date. Just while we're on the subject about the um, slightly wider point that Sam mentioned about, you know, how would we know and how can we sort of ask uh, the community this sort of thing? That's the, a perfect um, question that if we do a, some sort of user survey, um, knowing how people are installing Strimzy uh, would obviously be one of the questions um, that we should have on that. I know this is something that the maintainers have discussed in the past this possibility of having some sort of uh, a survey so we can understand better what people are doing with Strimzy. I think that makes sense. But it's something we should think through, right? It's not really something where we can throw a survey every other week because we talked about something. Yeah, of course. I mean, I have 
roughed out a few questions somewhere jotted down um, that I'd like to ask, but we should um, try and push that forward a little bit. I think it would be should useful. We... We, we make a lot of decisions at the moment sort of based on how feeling about how stuff's used and it would be good if that could be a little bit more informed by so actual numbers. should we add it to the agenda for the next community meeting? Yeah, let's do that. Can I uh, add your name there, you Tom, can, yeah. that you will prepare something? Yeah. I mean, we might get a biased sample, right? But something as simple as even opening a poll on like Twitter is would be at least some information, right? We might get only a certain subset of our users, but at least we get some data of who's using it and installing it with what. Yeah, I mean, the question is whether doing that on an ad hoc basis when we need um, you know, where it would be useful to have this sort of information versus something sort of more organized that we do on a sort of a six or 12 month, probably more likely sort of time frame where we ask a whole bunch of questions and make a bit more of a song and dance about, you know, trying to advertise it to um, Strimsy users and potential users. Um, no, that, that definitely does sound like a better idea in general. Yeah. So I think asking on Twitter is fine. Also, I'm not sure how big the return will be. I have no idea how to do the polls on Twitter, to be honest, uh, but that shouldn't be that hard to find out. And we would need to think a bit how to frame that question, I guess. It was just an idea. I, I, I don't ne definitely think it's the best approach, but it definitely might so work. Really focusing on the helm only. Can you try to put together how would you want that tweet to look like? Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll take a look. I mean, what I'm wondering about is uh, things like we can't really ask what installation method are you using because nobody's using Helm free for Streamsy if we don't have the chart released. So I'm not sure whether a question would be like uh, which Helm version What's your you preferred want us to support in Streamsy or something like that. How would you like to install Streamsy? Leaves it open-ended enough that people can say they whatever they want. Uh, I, isn't that too open-ended without the poll and the options? You mean, okay, I've no idea how Twitter polls work either. So I guess we probably have to enumerate all the different things. But, you know, you, you can still include Helm 2 and Helm 3 in that even if we've not previously had a, a Helm 3 yeah. installation method. You're, you know, you're yeah. asking for people's preferences, not what they might have been forced to do in the past. Yeah, in Twitter polls, you have, you have to define the options. So there's not like a general box. I think you can have four. So I guess that would be Helm 2, Helm 3, Operator Hub, and YAML files? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. I think those are sensible for. And then we say, if you have another preference, then why not reply to this? Uh, maybe we don't even. So how would that tweet look like? How do you prefer or how, how would it be in English? How would you prefer? Yeah, how would you prefer to install Streamsy? Streamsy? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm happy to take this offline and um, think more on the wording there. 
Um, and the options would be pretty much YAML files. Helm 2, Helm 3, Operator Hub. Dot io so do you want to take some more time to think about it sam yeah 100 percent. i think that if we were to do it on twitter i think the the wording would have to be very careful and um okay yeah yeah then maybe you can ping me on slack or something uh yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll put it. I could just open it up as a, a thread on the Slack. Um, yeah. Thanks. You can do polls on Slack as well. So you might get a more targeted response there. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, that's quite easy to do the polls on Slack. Yeah. Okay, so that sounds like a plan with regards to Helm 2. Okay. So the next point, which I for some reason added to the agenda, is uh, that I think we should think about moving forward with the resource versions which we are having currently for the custom resources. So I actually wanted to put together some notes about what we should think about for the things like uh, Kafka, because I think there are still some things which are not optimal in the V1 beta one. But I don't have any specific comments about uh, the other resources in my head. So the question is, for example, with those which are still V1 Alpha 1, uh, mainly Bridge, Kafka Connector, and Kafka Mirror Maker 2, do we think they are mature enough to be promoted to V1 Beta 1, or should we still keep them as V1 Alpha 1? From a Strumzy perspective, what, what do you see the differences V1 Alpha 1 versus V1 Beta 1 being in terms of support? So I don't think there are necessary. So when we changed from V1 Alpha 1 to V1 Beta 1 for the other resources, we did some changes to the structure. So uh, for example, uh, we had affinity and tolerations was originally at the spec.kafka level. Uh, but then we added this uh, templates uh, section. So we kind of moved them there and they are basically deprecated on the original location and are supposed to be used in the new one. So that was, for example, the change uh, we did there. Uh, so I guess either we have similar changes for the other resources and we can think about them and implement them or if we have no changes, then uh, we should maybe really just promote them to the newer version without any changes. Certainly, I'm not aware of um, anything that I particularly want to change. So one of the main reasons why I think we should think about it and try to move forward is that a uh, lot of, at least in some places, they're always popping up these warnings like you are using an alpha resource, blah, 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 and so on, which uh, don't always uh, look nicely in the logs and uh, some people might even take them seriously and got scared and so on. So 
does anyone think there is something to change in the Kafka bridge resource? Then I say we should just promote it to V1 beta 1 without any changes. What about the Kafka connector and Kafka mirror maker? To be honest, they are fairly new. So I personally wasn't completely sure if uh, we think we had them long enough to understand how they kind of look like and whether they are okay. Do we think that we got enough experience with them or should we wait? There's no harm in waiting for those two, I think. Although, like I say, I'm not really aware of anything at the moment. But if we waited another release or two, I think that would be fine. Okay. Sounds like a plan. So I guess I will at least open an issue or PR or something for the bridge. Anything more to this topic? So uh, I guess the next two ones are a bit connected because uh, we discussed them uh, last time a bit together. One is the question about whether we should have some policy for which Kubernetes versions we support. And the other one is how long should we support the V1, beta one CRDs and uh, how should we and when should we kind of migrate to CRD V1. So I guess with last time we didn't talk a bit that much about the support for the Kubernetes versions, but I think the options we discussed with regards to the CRD was that uh, if we expect that we will want to support the V1 beta 1 CRDs for uh, a long time, for example, until 2021, we should probably add the support for the CRD V1 relatively soon because we will anyway need them to live together as Kubernetes is proceeding to deprecate and remove the V1 beta 1 in the new versions. Whereas if we, for example, think that we will be able to remove the V1 beta 1, I don't know, during the autumn, then maybe it will save us some work instead of having kind of two sets of installation files and so on. It might be easier to just wait till then and move from V1 beta 1 to V1 in a one move without having two sets of files and so on. So I think that was what we discussed last time without any decision. Yeah, that sounds reasonable to me. Which one? Um, I mean, I do, I would, I think moving would be good, but I think limiting the number of changes we make would be good. So doing both in one go seem sensible. So what would be the right time to do that? Around the autumn or something? Or end of this year? Yeah, 
Yeah, sounds reasonable to me by the end of this year, but maybe, you know, if we can get it done October, November. So that would basically, where is the discussion from last time? I didn't took over oh, here are the notes. Uh, so that would basically, so today we support Kubernetes 111 plus, and that would move us to support 116 plus. I think 119 should be released uh, now. 118 is what's released now. 119 has, I think, the release candidate, so it will be released soon. So by that time, there will be 120 released. So if we are 116 plus, that's five Kubernetes versions back at that point. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. So do we want to have some dedicated policy for the supported Kubernetes versions? Or yes, to follow? Uh, I think we should semi semi random rules like uh, like that we change the supported versions when something happens. I would advocate for having some policy for it because it means that everyone knows up you know you can communicate in a sentence or two how it's going to work everyone knows that that informs you know how we plan stuff um how we you know how aggressively we test stuff um new versions of kubernetes and all the rest of it um whereas if it's just ad hoc then it means that we have to make awkward decisions and um, you know it's difficult for people to plan ahead um, because they don't know what the decision is going to be and so forth. Right so is the five versions what we want to have as such policy? So Kubernetes it's uh, quarterly releases isn't it? It's quarterly releases, and as so far that's... as I know, Kubernetes itself supports only three releases back. Which, to be honest, I don't think is enough. Yeah, I think that is too aggressive for many of our users. I mean, again, this would be, it would be really useful if we had a, a survey or you know, knew what version of Kubernetes people were running on. Um, it's well, very we difficult can, to make this decision. We can still say that uh, these are the current plans, but that we should wait for a survey, right? If we say that we move to the CRDV1 end of year or October, November, then that should be enough time to do the survey until then, right? So if we discuss the survey in two weeks in the next meeting, then it should not take months to get some results back. Okay, yeah. But so would the kind of working proposal be five releases then? Yeah, let's say that's our baseline, but we're prepared to change it based on what we might find in a survey. OK, 
Okay, so I guess uh, that's that, or does anyone have something else to these two topics? So I guess we take that into account for the survey and then when we have the survey result, we can get back to it. Sounds good to me. Okay. So the last point I added to the agenda was the 019 release. I uh, think we have now fairly interesting set of new features. And I was wondering if we should do a new release. So uh, looking at the change log, we have the open policy agent. Uh, we have the scale sub resources. We have the Java 11 uh, runtime. We have some bug fixes to cruise control. We have the Helm free. So, uh, what do you think about doing 019? I don't know, next week or something like that? Yeah, that sounds good. Um, I've got uh, one more cruise control PR that I want to get in before that adds in a bunch of performance stuff, but that's nearly ready to go. So, yeah, I don't think. We should necessarily do it right now and uh, not sure who would do it. If I would do it, I'm off uh, beginning of next week, but uh, yeah, maybe end of next week is something we can try to do some RC. Yeah, I'd like to get the um, dynamic reconfig stuff in if possible, but if it misses the boat, then it misses the boat. Let's not get started about your la last redesign to that. <laughs> so that sounds like a plan. Is there any topic Right, doing it at the end of the last week would be probably a bit too optimistic. Uh, is there anything else anyone has to discuss? What happened with um, Kafka Summit talks? Have you guys got any? I didn't. Mine no, got rejected as well. I had a talk that was rejected. Well, a couple actually. Anything else? Do we want to, so we have kind of 15 minutes. Do we want to spend it on triaging some issues or do we want to just call it a day? I'm happy to triage issues, but if other people want to leave, then that's fine. I would probably be quite happy to call it a day. Should we call it a day then? I would like to get going. I've got some things to do. Sorry, Tom. I guess we overruled you. That's fine. Okay, then I guess uh, that's it for today. Thanks for running this, uh, Jakob. Yeah, no problem. As always, the recording should be on uh, YouTube, YouTube channel later.
Thanks, folks. Thanks. Have a good evening. Thanks a lot. Yeah.